Namaste all the students. Today I have come up with uh, Health Population and Environment Education Class 10 Unit 4 Population and Environmental Status of Nepal. Uh, some of the students have got uh, confusion or they need this chapter. Uh, so in their request I brought this one today. So today we are discussing about unit for population and environmental status of Nepal. So we will uh, see the learning achievements first. <clears throat> today I will be focusing uh, on the book and I will teach you by using this book uh, more than the slides. So after completing this unit, what you have to learn? So you have to learn one, two, three, four, five, six things here. First, you have to be clear about these things. After that only, we can enter into the course. Okay, let's uh, study the learning achievements. By the end of this chapter, end of this unit, what will you learn? So first thing you will learn is to explain the trend of population distribution in Nepal by ecological reason. So trend of population distribution what is the trend of population distribution how is the population distributed in nepal how is the population distributed according to ecological reasons means himalayan hilly and torai region we have three ecological reasons how are they distributed how is population distributed in all these areas we must be able to explain it explain it okay so second thing we have to do is to tell the meaning of ecosystem after reading this unit we will be able to tell the meaning of ecosystem what is ecosystem we must be able to tell that similarly next thing is elaborate the ecosystem of mountain hill and torai region so we must be able to elaborate means make it long or explain the ecosystem of mountain hill and Torai region. What, what type of ecosystem is there in mountain, hilly and Torai region? Similarly, um, to identify the impact of human activities on ecosystem of mountain hill and Torai region. So what are the impacts of human activities on the ecosystem of mountain, hill and Torai region? We must be able to identify them. What to identify? The impacts of human activities. Because of human activities, what types of impacts are there in the ecosystem of mountain, hill and Tarai region? Similarly, to mention the mitigating measures of effects on the ecosystem of mountain, hills and Tarai region. Mitigating measures. So these are the impacts. So how can we mitigate them? How can we control them? We must be able to mention them. Means we must be able to write them or list them. Lastly, participate in environment management and conservation program. How can we uh, manage the environment? How can we participate in management of environment or conservation of environment? So these things we will learn. So firstly, we will go to uh, explain the trend of population distribution in Nepal by ecological reasons. So directly we will go to this table. Look here. What type of distribution uh, of population is there in mountain, hill and Torai region? All of us know that we don't have uh, the even distribution of population. The population in mountain, hill and Torai region, they are not even means they are not similar. They are not same. You can see uneven distribution of population in mountain, hill and Torai region. Look here. We can analyze the data. So, for example, uh, you have to remember at least uh, 2001 and 2011 AD data. This, uh, you cannot remember the uh, total population. At least you can remember the percentage. So, when you are asked um, to show the distribution of population by ecological division. You can show this mountain hill and Torai region and you can show 2001 
population percent and 2011 population percent and don't forget to uh, write the source cbs 2011 or you can say 2012 ad central bureau of statistics from where this data are taken <coughs> sorry okay so if we analyze here let's see what can you see uh, while analyzing this table you see um, horizontally and vertically horizontally means you see according to the year mountain region in 2001 the population percent was 7.3 percent whereas in 2011 it uh, became 6.7 percent so you compare these two horizontally in this way means uh, in 2001 it was 7.3 in 2011 6.7 means population is increasing or decreasing so obviously it is decreasing similarly in hilly region 2001 44.3 percent people but in 2011, 43%. Is it increasing or decreasing? You can compare it. 44.3, 43. It is also decreasing. But in Tarai region, if you see, in 2001, 48.3% population. In 2011, 50.3%. So in this way, this population is increasing. You can see population is increasing in Torai region, if you see in this way. So now you can analyze this table in your own way. Uh, horizontally, we have already uh, compared. So when we horizontally compare, uh, Torai region has got more population. Torai region, in Torai region, the population is increasing according to time. But in mountain and hilly region, population is somehow decreasing. So now compare it vertically like this. Let's see. <clears throat> Mountain region 7.3, hill region 44.3, Torai region 48.3. So which has got the highest population percent? Torai region, you can see. Torai has the highest and hill second highest and mountain has the least population. Similarly, in 2011 also, you can see more than 50% population in Tarai uh, and uh, second highest 43 percent in hill and mountain 6.7 percent. So in this way Tarai region has got the more population. Okay now after this you can see uh, population of Tarai region has been increasing. We have already concluded by this table. Similarly a remarkable decrease in the share of population in mountain and hilly re regions. We have already concluded. So, mountain and hilly region population is decreasing, whereas Tarai region it is increasing. Now, you may be asked the question, why is population increasing in Tarai region? And why population is decreasing in mountain and hilly region? So, you can easily write this. Okay, now here I have highlighted the important points. The population of Nepal is not evenly distributed. Give the reasons. This is the frequently asked question. So many times it is asked. In Nepal, population is not distributed evenly in all the ecological reasons. Why? Give any four reasons. Give any five reasons. You may be asked this. So look at what are the main uh, reasons. First one is diversity in topography. Okay, diversity in topography. Second one is uneven distribution of means and resource. Third one is climate. Next one is unequal distribution of facilities, services, and their accessibility. This can be some of the reasons. So same thing is <coughs> shown in this table clearly. Look here. So Nepal has got diversity in land topography. Because of this, there is unequal population distribution. Okay, it means what? In mountain region, we have got very much rocked uh, and uh, steep uh, mountains and uh, rocked soil, not fertile soil. So the topography is very difficult. Whereas in uh, hilly region, there are many hills. And in Tora region, it has got plain land. So because of this, the population is more in Torai. 
whereas less in mountain region. Similarly, uh, means and resources are not distributed evenly in in uh, Himalayan region, means and resources are less in Torai region and hilly region comparatively more. Similarly, climate is another important factor. Look here, diversity in climatic condition. So why there is less pop population in uh, mountain region? Because of severe cold climate. Why there is more in hilly region? Because climate is favorable. So similarly, uneven distribution of fertile land so in mountain region, we have less fertile land, um, whereas in um, Torai region, there is more fertile plain land because of which even it is hot there, many people are living there. Similarly, lack of regional balance in development programs. Look here. Balanced regional development is not there. Similarly, high rate of in-migration. Okay, many people are... Uh, migrating from mountain and hilly region to Torai region uh, for finding out the job opportunities for facilities. So this is also one reason. Similarly, on even access to socio-economic and political opportunities and facilities. So the facilities are not even in Torai region. There are more facilities and opportunities, whereas in mountain and hill region less. So these are all the reasons why population is not distributed evenly in Nepal. So this is so important. I have double ticked here. You can uh, note them down. Now, first learning achievement we have uh, achieved. Now we can explain the trend of population distribution in Nepal by ecological reason. Can you or not once check it? You can uh, give this table uh, with 2001 percentage, population percentage, and the source. After that, you can analyze it uh, horizontally and vertically uh, in your own way. Uh, whatever summary you have got, you can explain. And after that, you can also give the reasons why, why this is happening. So three things you have to give. First is table. Second is table summary analysis. And third is why. So what are the reasons that there is more population in Tara and less in mountain? So you have to give the why answer, why questions answer. So after we are clear about this, okay, after we are clear about this, we can go to ecosystem. Now our second learning objective is uh, we must be able to tell the meaning of ecosystem. So what is ecosystem? Let's go to uh, the next topic. So here, you can see ecosystem now simply if you say eco and system there are two words eco means environment system means interacting and in an interdependent complexity okay system of environment is ecosystem simply now here are some some of the uh, definitions you can uh, write them note them down the system resulting from the integration of all the living and non-living factors of environment is ecosystem. You remember the system, that is the system, ecosystem is system resulting from the integration of all living and non-living factors. You can also say interaction of living and non-living factors. So you can easily understand it. You imagine one non-living factor and living factor. They have to interact. They have to interact. For example, I am living factor and uh, I'm looking at laptop. This is non-living factor. Now there is some interaction. I'm looking at laptop. Means laptop is non-living factor. I am living. So living thing is interacting with, with non-living thing. And this makes the system. That is what? ecosystem so ecosystem is the system which is created by the interaction of living and non-living components so we take breath we take oxygen from the environment yes so we are living uh, component and uh, we have interaction with non-living component so this has created the system so you can take many examples of this so just you remember ecosystem is the system 
with, re with results from the interaction or you can say integration of living and non-living components. So in other words, another definition also you can write, ecosystem is a basic fundamental unit consisting of both biotic and abiotic components. Biotic components means living component, abiotic components means non-living components interacting with each other for maintenance of life process. To maintain the life process, they will interact. So this is ecosystem. So ecosystem can uh, be very small or big. Like for example, there can be a pond ecosystem. Okay, inside a small pond, there can be the interaction of living and non-living components. Inside a pond, there is water. There can be water plants. There can be fish. There can be other water animals. So they have uh, the interaction with each other. Similarly, in cropland also, there is one system of eco, uh, system, one system, ecosystem is there. So ecosystem can be small as a pond uh, and it can be large as ocean also, desert ecosystem, forest ecosystem. So they are very large ecosystem. In forest, there is very uh, great, um, very complex um, interaction of uh, living and non-living components in desert, in ocean, they are very big large ecosystem whereas a pond has got a small ecosystem you can think of a tree ecosystem as well inside a tree also there can be the ecosystem and whole forest in the big forest also there can be ecosystem there can be interaction of um, living and non-living components so in this way you you can be able to give the uh, meaning of ecosystem so here i can uh, show you uh, this slide okay you can see here the ecosystem is the interaction between the living and non-living things or uh, living things means biotic and abiotic components see, same thing ecosystem can be of any size i have already explained look here you can have tree ecosystem forest ecosystem pond ecosystem grassland ecosystem cropland ecosystem any type of ecosystem so the interaction between the biotic and abiotic factor is basically done for two objectives one is the cycling of nutrients and another is for the flow of energy uh, I will not focus this more. Mm, so now our main objective here is to tell the meaning of ecosystem. So I think all of you are clear. What is ecosystem? Ecosystem is the system which results from the interaction or you can say inter integration of living and non-living factors of environment. So now our objective is clear second uh, level we have completed so first level we did um, a trend of population distribution in nepal by ecological reason we have done and now second objective we are clear uh, we can tell the meaning of ecosystem i think all of you can do it easily now let's go to the third point now in third point we must be able to elaborate the ecosystem of mountain hill and thorai region now we will go to mountain ecosystem of mountain hill and thorai region so what is the ecosystem of mountain hill and thorai region we can see look here there is one picture of the ecosystem look here this is living component sun is non-living component plant living component and you decomposes fungi bacteria rock and soil water some are living and some are non-living components and they make the interaction and they make the system that is ecosystem now ecosystem of nepal by geographical reason now we will see this before uh, looking at this i will show you another slide okay this picture also you can once see it maybe in science you have read okay before going to that i will uh i would like to tell you some points here this we have already done second uh, the types of ecosystem vary from one ecological region to another according to climate land topography altitude etc okay the ecosystem can be different in different ecological region because they have different climate they have different land topography they have different altitude so 
ecosystem will be different. So we are going to read separately. Uh, 23 different types of ecosystem in plain land. So in Nepal, in plain land, there are 23 different varieties of ecosystem. And in conserved area, there are 15 varieties of uh, ecosystem. In mid hilly areas, there are 52 varieties of ecosystem. In mountainous regions, there are 38 different types of ecosystems, different varieties of ecosystems. So this data you can remember, okay? Plain land, 23 varieties, conserved area, 15, medial areas, 52 types, mountainous region, 38 types of ecosystems can be found. Now, what are the aspects of e ecosystem? Look here, we have three aspects, four aspects of ecosystem, physical aspect, biological aspect, environmental aspect, and socioeconomic aspect of ecosystem. Physical aspect means abiotic component, non-living component, biological aspect, biotic component, means living component, environmental aspect, the environmental features, and socioeconomic components include the socioeconomic activities. So by these um, ideas, we will study next slide. We will study about this ecosystem of Nepal by geographical reasons. Okay. Now here I have highlighted the main important points. So we will focus only that, otherwise the video would be very long. So look here. Uh, now it is about Nepal. Where is Nepal located? Everything is given there. So I'm, I'm not going to tell more about this. So uh, the area of Nepal, 1,47,181 is given, but uh, it has slightly changed. 1,47,500 something square kilometer. It is already increased. So no need to focus this more. And uh, Nepal covers 0.03% and 0.3% uh, of the total land area of the world and Asia respectively means 0.03% uh, of the land area of the world and 0.3% of the land area of Asia. So you can remember sometimes you may be asked. Similarly, uh, Nepal's uh, longitude, Nepal lies between the longitude of 80 degree 4 minute to 88 degree 12 minute east and latitude of 26 degree 22 minute to 30 degree 27 minute north so this also you can remember so i am not going to tell it in detail and you can see 885 kilometer long and 195 kilometer uh, breadth and its altitude range 62 8848.86 meter now it has already increased the um, the height of mount everest has increased by 0 0.86 0 0.86 meter so 8848.86 you can add here and now next is altitude variation so Nepal has got the altitude variation means uh, Nepal um, has got the variation in the height height from the sea level. So because of this, there are different types of climates. There are different types of vegetations. Everything is different because of that. So now the main important thing is here. I have double ticked here. So Nepal is subdivided into these these parts look here himalayan region is divided into three subdivisions the trans himalayas outer himalaya and the main himalaya or you can say the main himalaya outer himalaya and the trans himalaya means the inner himalaya similarly uh, uh, hill hilly region is divided into three areas the mahabharat range mid hills and shivalik range and Torai region power uh, inner Torai and plain Torai. In this way it is divided so now next important thing i have highlighted here is um, according to land resource mapping project 1986 80 20.7 of the total area of nepal is cultivated by cultivable land so how many percentage of land area is cultivable in nepal 20.7 percent cultivable land okay now we are going to the main topic 
uh, what type of uh, ecosystem is there in mountain hill and the region we are going to the main topic uh, third learning achievement we are going to the third learning achievement so we are uh, studying about the ecosystem of mountain hill and the region okay keep in mind okay now let's go to mountain region okay i have highlighted it lies in northern part here i have written one number one number while reading you um, take out the main main points don't study unnecessary things you take out necessary things and make the notes okay i have given here one number location inside location mountain region lies in northern part okay i have highlighted northern part okay uh, second number is altitude what is the altitudinal range of mountain region? 4,877 to 8,848.86 meter. Please add here 0. 0.86 meter. I already told you 0. 0.86 meter. So this is altitude. And third number I have written here is land area. What is the land area percentage? Coverage 35% of the land area is covered by mountain region. So please remember location. Uh, you revise it northern part altitude 4877 to 8848.86 8, meter land area is 35% okay can we go to next okay after that fourth number is subdivision subdivision uh, mountain uh, region is divided subdivided into three regions we already uh, saw uh, main himalaya outer himalaya and inner himalaya or it is also called trans himalayas okay so next uh, five number i have written here is peaks what types of mountain peaks are there in main himalayas especially in main himalayas uh, mountain peaks like Taulagiri, annapurna manaslu mount everest kanchanjunga they are there you can write three four mountains after that six number some valleys are also there some valleys are there uh, in the trans himalayas okay and uh, those valleys in inner himalayas they are called ports as well and they are uh, there are many small valleys there they are uh, the, those valleys are called ports right and especially portes and serpas live there so these ports and six number seven number number of districts how many districts are there 16 districts so this all from here to here i have summarized here one number location two number altitude three number land area four subdivision peaks and small valleys called ports and districts in this way you summarize them take a note uh, in these seven points okay this is the introduction now let's go to the physical aspect so ecosystem includes physical aspect biological aspect and socioeconomic aspect we already told it what are the three things included in uh, ecosystem physical aspect biological aspect and socio cultural aspect three aspects are there now we are talking about mountain region inside mountain region what are the physical aspects what are the physical aspects what are the biological aspects and what are the socio-cultural aspects so before this you should know physical aspects inside physical aspects what things are included look here inside physical aspects we will include about land topography what is what type of land structure is there what type of climate what are the rivers what are the edific factors means soil factors so these all things include are included in physical aspects here i have um, numbered them okay here look here uh, in physical aspects physical features uh, what types of mountains are there what types of lakes what is the land area coverage how many percent is cultivable land what are the other topographic features Simi similarly what are the subdivisions rainfall pattern or you can say precipitation snow line climate these all are under the physical aspects so now let's see first i have written one feature here 
features means you can see mountain ranges, snow cap peaks and valleys are there. So in mountain region, what type of uh, features are there? Physical features, mountain ranges are there, snow cap peaks are there and different valleys are there. First, second number I numbered here, here two. What types of mountains are there? Look here. Kanchanjanga, Langtang, Mahalangur, Ganesh, Annapurna, Dhaulagiri, Kanjirova and other mountains I have uh, told here as well. So you can list the mountains. And next third number lakes are also there. What types of lakes? Tilicho, Rara, Foksundo, Chorolpa, Imja. These are some lakes. And fourth number I have written land area. What is the land area coverage? 35% we have already done done it in introduction as well yes and cultivable land portion look here according to land mapping uh, land resource mapping project 1980 uh, sorry 1978-79 put 4.4% land is under cultivation okay cultivable land 4.4% similarly other topographic features look here it has rocked terrain uh, not a smooth one very rock terrain rock type of uh, land structure uh, rocky type of land structure high altitude is there steep slopes are there and look here uh, most part of uh, the mountain region rocky and barren barren khali barren and rocky okay these are the topographic features so in this paragraph what points you have to focus one is feature what type of feature? Snow cap mountains, uh, mountain peaks. You can write what types of mountains are there, what types of lakes, and land area coverage 35%, cultivable land 4.4%, topographic features rocky, barren, steep, um, rock terrain, high altitude. So, in this way, when you read this chapter, you have to take the notes, you have to take the notes in the points, and you have to write it in your note and remember them. Okay, let's go to the next paragraph. Uh, here I have highlighted, look here, seven number, up to six number we have done. Seven number, subdivision, precipitation, snow line, and climate. Subdivision, we already did. It has got three subdivisions, main Himalaya, inner Himalaya, and outer Himalaya. We already did. And next one is precipitation. Precipitation means rainfall pattern. What type of rainfall pattern? No rainfall. There is no rainfall. And next is snow line. Snow line about snow line. The questions can be asked many times. And the questions can be asked from here. So you remember this uh, point. Snow line starts from the elevation of 4000 meters in the west, in the western part. The snow line starts from 4000 meters. Please remember, note it down from 4000 meters. And in, um, uh, in the eastern part of the country, the uh, snow line starts from 5000 meters this is very important one please note note it down and climate is extremely cold here climate is extremely cold i think you got the points look here here one two three four five six six points are here seven eight nine ten please make the notes yourself now same thing is uh, given in this table uh, all of you can see this uh, land area, cultivable land, altitude, climate, topography, rough, steep rocks, snow covered, subdivision uh, is there, mountain peaks, and snow line 4000 meter in the west and 5000 meter in the east, precipitation, snowfall in winter, and no rainfall, and mountain ranges, Kanchanjanga, Mahalangur, and other mountains you can add here. Uh, other mountains also, soil type, unfertile, silty, and rocky type of soil, and valleys among valleys we have Arun valley so this one also uh, is very important you can remember this okay so we have finished the physical aspect look here in physical aspects what things are there you remember don't mix up physical uh, aspects with biological aspects Physical aspects are non-living components. They may, may be, they may be altitude, they may be climate, they may be topography, subdivision, mountain peaks, lakes. These are all physical aspects. They don't have the biological aspect. No, 
these are all non-living aspects now we are going to living aspect they, that means biological aspect here there is one mistake here should be l biological aspect now biological aspect means only living components living components living things it means it can include animals plants vegetations birds okay the animals and plants which have adapted in the cold and dry climate and less oxygen are found here this is uh, we are talking about mountain region so here those plants and animals which can adapt with very cold severe cold climate and which can adapt with less, less oxygen that type of vegetation and wildlife can be found here and here agricultural production is also very low but again there are many uh, biological aspects you can see here i have double tick so uh, while reading you uh, read it by taking the points like this make notes in this way okay what type of trees are found here maple gobresalla devdar bozpatra you remember them uh, note it down and remember uh, what types of herbs are found jatamasi yarsagumba timur padamchal what types of uh, wild animals snow leopard wild boar red panda assamese monkey musk deer domestic animals sheep horse yeah potigukur etc so these are the things to note down and remember no need to understand you have to remember them okay now birds what type of birds dafe d-a-n-p-h-e here it became m actually it is dafe munal kokla silme snow pigeon Fruits, apple, lemon, orange, crops, barley, potato, buckwheat, millet, uva, junar, etc. Vegetable, carrot, spinach, onion, garlic, radish. So these points, uh, you note them and remember. Okay, are you all clear? So just we said in physical aspects, we have the non-living components like climate, land structure, uh, land area percent, and uh, fertile land and subdivisions precipitation soil type mountain ranges lakes rivers they come here but in biological aspects what's what are there plants animals look at trees herbs they are plants while animals domestic animals are animals birds are there um, crops uh, fruits crops vegetable these are in biological aspect so you are clear i think now i will go a bit faster now inside socio-economic aspect you um, break it down socio-economic aspect means social aspect and economic aspect okay social aspect and economic aspect so they include language religion occupation food habits way of living how they live how they wear what they eat how they eat what type of lifestyle they have where they live what type of houses what type of clothes they wear what type of food they eat everything comes in this what type of occupation they follow so let's go here directly i have gone to the main main points so all of you look at this look at this point okay inside socioeconomic aspect first one you can uh, do is population so according to 2011 ad census uh, 2068 bs census 6.73 percent people are living in mountain region so you can remember this and how many districts are there 16 what types of caste and ethnic groups sherpa thakali manangi chetri rai limbu bote okay Festivals, Losar, Buddha Purnima, Dumje, Udauli, Ubauli, Manirimdu, Dasain. Okay, religion, Buddhist, Hindu, Kira. Language, Sherpa, Thakali, Rai, Bote, etc. Religious sites, Muktinath, Gosain Kunda, Pathivara, Mustang, Gumba, uh, Tangboche, Gumba. Okay, religious sites. Sometimes you may be asked, Muktinath, uh, is in which uh, geographical region you may be asked this type of question and clothes boku docha ulon hat house stone house having flat roof with small windows famous places olang chungola namche chame thakola 
So this uh, name of places also you remember S similar to religious sites. This can also be asked in the same way. Olang Chung Gola is related to which uh, geographical region? In this way, questions can be asked. Occupation, agriculture, mountaineering, tourism, domestic trade, animal husbandry. But uh, tourism is very much important here. Here I have highlighted here tourism and animal husbandry also important. So first one is animal husbandry here, the major uh, occupation, and after that, tourism and little agriculture. And lifestyle, people temporarily migrate to the hill and Tora in winter along with their cattle and return in summer. Okay, so if you remember these points, you can easily remember the socio-economic aspect. So economic aspect means here occupation, what type of economic activities they do, the major occupation, animal husbandry and tourism and other agriculture, mountaineering and others are there. And social uh, social aspect means uh, you can say what type of language, what type of religion, festivals, caste, uh, these all come under social aspect. So it is not so difficult. So similar to this, now if we go to hilly region, what type of um, uh, physical, biological and sociocultural aspect? Let's see. Uh, here I have again numbered here. One number is location. Location, where does it lie? Between the mountain and Torai region. Two number, what is its altitude? 610 to 4,877 meters. And land area is 42%. You compare it with uh, the mountain region. Mountain region 35%, here 42%. Land area. Now subdivision also, three subdivisions. Midland Hill, Mahabadar Range and Shivalik Range. We have already done it. And after that, look here, uh, Mahabharat Range. So first uh, subdivision, Mahabharat Range, it is also called Lesser Himalayan. Lesser Himalayas, okay. It is also called Lesser Himalayas. And next is Midland Hills. And it is also called Pahar, okay. And in Midland Hills, we can find different valleys, rivers, basins, and tars. You know valleys. Mm, valleys are sur surrounded by hills. River basins means the uh, river basi, nadi basi. We say nadi basi and tars, you know, a bit raised uh, part of land. And halka mati utero sammo paregba tars. And uh, different famous fertile valleys are also there like Kathmandu and Pokhara. And similarly, uh, uh, there are different uh, environmental maladies, environmental problems are there. Uh, like uh, deforestation here, first deforestation and shortage of fuel, wood and fodder, soil erosion, floods and landslides. Okay, so here I have uh, number, five number here, up to four number, one, two, three, four number uh, we have done here. And five number, Mahabharat range. Here, Mahabharat range, I have already told about Mahabharat range. It is also called Lesser Himalayas and Midland Hill. Midland Hill is also called Pahar. And uh, next, different valleys, basins and tars are found there. And fertile valleys are there like Pokhara, Kathmandu. And different environmental problems are seen. Uh, deforestation and shortage of fuel, wood, fodder, soil erosion, floods and landslide now <clears throat> we can go to the physical aspect of hilly region uh, inside physical aspect of hilly region i have highlighted here the main main points okay look here 610 to 4877 meters it has this altitude mm, we have already done this and what type of topography rock topography with hills and hillocks different hills and hillocks are found uh, small hills, hillocks, and different basins, valleys, tars, plain lands, 42% land area coverage, 17.2% cultivable land, according to Land Resource Mapping Project 1978-79. And uh, similarly, um, the subdivisions are Mahabharat range, Midland, and Chure, Chure range, or you can say Shivali. 
and rich diversity of ecosystem. There is rich ecosystem diversity and climate is moderate. So inside this physical aspect, look here, what are the main main points we have to include here? Here I have double tick. Land area coverage is 42%. Cultivable land is 17.2%. Altitude 610 to 4,877 meters. Climate is moderate, mild and healthy. Healthy type of climate. Mild type of climate. Thick of climate. Topography. High. Uh, peak hills are there. Valleys are there. Basins. Stars are there. And subdivision. Mahabharata range. Midland and Shivalik hills. Or you can say Churi. Valleys, Kathmandu, Pohara and Surkhet, Lakes, Phewa Lake, Rupa Lake, Begnas, Madi, Itishi. Precipitation means, uh, I already told you, this is rainfall pattern. Heavy rainfall during monsoon. Okay, this one you noted down. So, in hilly region, there is heavy rainfall at the time of monsoon. And soil type is silty and unfertile. Not so much fertile. In some valleys, in some valley areas, the so soil is fertile. Otherwise, almost all unfertile and silty type of soil so these are the main points you have to remember now let's go to biological aspect uh, here what type of uh, animals and plants are found uh, this hilly region is very rich in biological diversity you remember this and it has deciduous and mixed uh, type of forest mixed type in the higher altitude uh, there, there are different uh, uh, forests which can be found in mountain region and in the lower part, the forest which can be found in Torai region. So it is mixed forest and it is called deciduous forest. Mainly deciduous forest can be found in this hilly region. Deciduous forest means six months uh, they shed their leaves. Now let's go to the summary of this uh, biological aspect. We already know in biological aspects we have plants, animals uh, and birds. Look here. What type of trees are found? You just uh, note them down. Uttis, Chilaune, Gobresalla, Poyu, Kotus, Khoyer, Khosru, uh, Khosru. So these are the trees found here in hilly region. Hops, Tezpat, Chiraito, Chutro, Kalu Thaturo, Pats Onle, Harro, Burro, Rato Chau. These are herbs. And wild animals like clouded leopard, maybe in Nepal it is called Tuanse Chitua, leopard cat, sloth bear, wild cat, porcupine, uh, in Nepal it, it is Dumshi, you know, Chital. Domestic animals, cow, buffalo, horse, goat, donkey. And in fruits, orange, lemon, guava, banana, strawberry, birds, kalis, falcon, hawk, wild cock, eagle, parrot, doe, crops, paddy, wheat, maize, millet, cash crops, coffee, tea, sugarcane, oil seed, cardamom, and vegetable, brinjal, spinach, bitter gourd, pumpkin. Okay, so cash crops, all of you know, right? So these are the main things you have to remember by noting them down okay i am not uh, explaining more because these things are to remember then to understand um okay let's go to socio economic aspect it is not so difficult so in hilly region what type of social and economic aspects are there we will directly go to the uh, points we don't have more time look here uh sorry uh here population 43.01% or almost 43% according to 2068 BS census. 43% of people are living here in hilly region. And uh, there are 40 districts among 77 districts. Caste and ethnic groups Gurung, Mogar, Rai, Limbu, Newar, Damai, Tamangs, they live here. And cloths, thick woolen cloths in winter and thin cloths in summer. And house, what type of house? A house mostly made up of stones and bricks or mud with thatched roof. Thatched roof means the roofs made by the different types of grass, straw, right? roof or roof. And tiles, some somewhere we can see tiled roofs uh, in the village. And in city area, we can see the concrete uh, buildings, RCC buildings can be found, uh, house type. Festivals, Dasain Tihar, Buddha Purnima, Udauli, Uboli, Maghi Sangranti, Eid, Christmas, these all are uh, 
celebrated and in reason hindu sorry religion hindu buddhist islam christian kirat language nepali newari mogar gurung tamang rai limbu famous religious places pasupatinath swambunath buda nilkantha swargadwari ruru dakshinikali manakamana and many other you can add yourself famous famous places pokhara kathmandu dulikhel kal कंग ककनी सिन्धुली सिन्धुलीगढी इलाम धनकुटा पाल्पा इतिसि एन्ड अकुपेसन एग्रीकल्चर एन्ड सर्भिस बिजनेस ट्रेड टुरिजम इंडस्ट्री दिस अल आर देयर सो दिस आर द मेन मेन पोइन्ट्स यू हैव टू इन्क्लूड सो सोशियो इकोनोमिक एस्पेक्ट आई थिंक इट इज नॉट डिफिकल्ट फर यू नाउ लेट्स गो टु तराई रिजन ओके Tarai region, I have here numbered one number location. Where is Tarai region? It is in the southernmost part of the country. Okay. What is the land area coverage? 23%. So please uh, compare this with Himalayan and Hilly region. Himalayan region 35%, Hilly region 42% and Tarai region 23%. Okay. By area, it is the smallest. And uh, third number I uh, numbered here. Uh, altitude 60 to 600 meter again now you can compare with um, himalayan and hilly region look here 60 to 610 meter uh, tarai hilly region 610 to 4877 meter and uh, mountain region 4877 to 8848.86 meter so in this way while reading you read by comparison okay so that you will be clear and soft division look here power region sorry here is one mistake b h a b a r okay power region southern plain tarai plain tarai and inner tarai three soft divisions we already looked at this and the topography of this area is very plain the land structure is very plain soil is also very fertile and there are some dune valleys so dune valleys uh, so surrounded by the lower hills uh, of the region, they are called dune valleys like Surkhet Valley and Rapti Valleys. Rapti Valley means Dang Valley, and uh, in Western Nepal, and the Rapti Valley Chitwan in Central Nepal. So, the Surkhet, Dang, and Chitwan they are called the dune valleys surrounded by lower hills, and there are 21 uh, districts here. So, this is the summary look here location. Land area, altitude, subdivision, topography, soil type, dune valleys. Okay, dune valleys are also very important. So, what uh, what type of dune valleys like uh, Surkhet, uh, like Dang and Chitwan? What type of soil? Fertile soil, alluvial soil. What type of to topography? Plain land area. Yes, plain topography. <clears throat> And subdivision, three subdivisions, altitude, you know, land area and location, you know. So this much, this is introduction. Now let's go to physical aspects. <clears throat> physical aspects, if you see uh, inside physical aspects, what things are there, you know, these all points are there. So now again, uh, look here, flat, flat, flat land, plain land, and climate is hot and humid, okay. Land uh, structure is flat land plain land and climate is hot and humid what type of soil alluvial fertile soil and 23 percent of land area coverage 51.7 percent of cultivable land and inner valleys or you can say dune valleys like chitwan dang and uh, another we said chitwan dang and surkhet valleys so similar things are uh, repeated here so you have to select only the physical uh, features here look here land coverage cultivable land altitude climate topography here it should be plain 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 land plain topography subdivision is main thara inner thara and power precipitation means rainfall pattern is heavy rainfall during summer the soil type is alluvial and fertile if you remember this table it would be enough now dune valleys you especially focus this uh, what is dune valley now similarly biological aspects what types of plants animals birds look here trees inside trees sal shiso satisal karam simal people in hops neem pudina kyukumari sarpaganda pose 
bozo, taturu, horta prey, titipati, and wild animals, Asiatic elephant, Bengal tiger, common leopard, one horn, rhino, barking deer, swamp deer, domestic animals, cow, buffalo, pea, goat, horse, donkey, fruits, banana, pineapple, jackfruit, papaya, watermelon, pomegranate, guava, birds, eagle, hornbill, dope, parrot, luiche, sparrow, crow, kingfisher, vulture, nightingale, crops, paddy, wheat, maize, millet, and vegetables, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, brinjal, ladies' finger, tomato. These are the um, biological aspects. So, so at least uh, from one category, you can remember three to four uh, items. So if you cannot remember all. Now, socioeconomic as aspects. Torai region is called the granary basket of Nepal. Okay, all of you know. Many people are engaged in agriculture and uh, most of the agricultural products are supplied from here. Granary basket of Nepal. In Nepal, we say Anna Bandar. Okay. Now, other things, socioeconomic aspect, we can see population 50.27%. 50.27% mm, and it is rounded off in the previous data here is 50.277 but upside it is 50.3 it is rounded off you can write either of them if we see here here is 50.3 actually it is 50.27 it is rounded off here okay uh, districts there are 21 districts caste uh, and ethnic group Rajbongsi, Tharu, Dhimal, Maji, Rajput, Satar, Yadav, Jha, Delhi, Kayastha. These are the ethnic groups. Festivals Eid, Magi, Chhat, Holi, uh, Dipavali. I think it is Dipavali. Uh, Sama Chakhewa. Religion Hindu, Muslim, Jain, Sikh, Christian, language Maithili, Bosburi, Tharu, Dhimal, Santhal. Rasbomsi, Nepali, house, wood, mud, dry grass, bamboo with thatched or tiled roofs in the village and RCC buildings in the city area, same like in hilly region. So in um, village areas, there can be the thatched roof or tiled roof using bamboo, grass, wood, mud, but in city area, RCC buildings means concrete buildings, uh, religious places. Ram Duni, Bara Chetra, Bura Subba, Lumbini, Janapur, Tam, Godimai. These are very important. Sometimes you may be asked, where is Bara Chetra? Then you have to write, it is in Torai region. Okay, famous places, Toran, Janapur, Birgans, Biratnagar, Dipal, Mohindranagar. Occupation, agriculture, industry, trade, service, business. Major occupation is agriculture here. Okay, so up to here, we have finished the third learning objective now i will take you to um, the first page learning achievement we have uh, achieved the three learning objectives <clears throat> sorry uh, first one we uh, we are now able to tell about the trend of population distribution by ecological reason uh, we can tell the meaning of ecosystem now we can easily elaborate the ecosystem of mountain hill and Tarai region okay can all of you uh, elaborate that yes so mountain region what type of ecosystem ecosystem means three aspects are there physical biological and sociocultural aspect so in mountain region what type of physical aspects what type of biological aspect what type of socioeconomic aspect in hilly and Tarai region also similarly you have remembered and inside uh, the physical aspect, what things are included, uh, climate, land area coverage, subdivisions, what types of mountains, lakes, what type of uh, land features are there, everything, they are included in physical aspect. And in biological aspect, what things are included, what type of plants and animals, birds are found. And in sociocultural aspect, what type of festivals, what type of religions, what type of caste and ethnic groups of people, what type of houses, what type of clothes they wear, what is their lifestyle, what type of economic activities are they involved in. These things are included. So you can easily do this. Now, our another learning objective is impact of human activities on the ecosystem of mountain hill and Torai region. We know about ecosystem of mountain hill and Torai region. 
Now, what types of impacts of human activities are there in the ecosystem of mountain hill and thorai region? Let's see. Because of human activities, uh, what are the impacts on the ecosystem? And let's talk about that. There are many negative impacts because of human activities towards the ecosystem of mountain hill and thorai region. Now we will uh, read them in short. Look here. Mm, okay. Um, look here. I have highlighted some points here. Unplanned industrialization, one number. Unmanaged urbanization, okay. Unplanned construction works, random use of chemical fertilizers, deforestation, poaching of animals, unmanaged transportation system. These all are the human uh, effects of human activities effects of human activities manche ko karan le pae ko effect haru okay so now separately we will study like effects of human activities on ecosystem of geographical regions look here what type of effects are found in mountain region due to the human activities like we mentioned here due to these types of activities what type of effects are seen look here uh difficult to carry out development works in uh, mountain region because of the geographical remoteness because the because of uh, difficult geography it is difficult to carry out development work in mountain region and because of that population density is also very low and because of that uh, there are less number of industries means industrialization is not so easy there and agriculture is not so sustainable there not systematic we cannot do agriculture better there and there is lack of technological advancement there so these are all the features of mountain region so you may be sometimes ask the question which uh, ecological reason or geographical reason is backwarded in uh, development or backwarded in technology or uh, like that okay so there is less impact of development works and modernization in this mountain system because of the difficult geography. Now we are talking about the effects, effects on the ecosystem of Himalayan region because of human activities. Many sorry for the hairy. The ecosystem cost to So look here. First effect is deforestation. Because of human activities, there is deforestation and there is excessive use of forest resource. So how can we mitigate that? We can uh, uh, have the proper management of forest resource and source of alternative sources of fuel. We can source alternative source of fuel. You can also give other uh, ideas here. Similarly, another effect is landslide, soil erosion and soil sterility due to improper use of land resource. Okay misuse of land resource due to that there is land uh, slide soil erosion and soil sterility okay on fertile soil and for that what can you do what are the mitigating measures means controlling measures for that proper management of eco-friendly and terrace farming what type of farming eco-friendly farming i know environmental hamper no porne khalko farming eco-friendly and terrace farming terrace farming means uh, like uh, making the um, field like terrace, terrace farming, step farming, you can say, and use of compost manure followed uh, crop cycle, use of compost manure, using the compost manure instead of um, uh, instead of fertilizers, uh, chemical fertilizers, um, and similarly following the crop cycle, means cycle of the crops. Uh, you um, uh, what producing different types of crops in different uh, years because of which the fertility of soil will remain same uh, this year if we uh, grow some one type of crop another year another crop should be grown so this is called crop cycle that can be done similarly depletion of pasture land pasture land means charan uh, chetra okay where we graze the animals depletion of pasture land due to the indiscriminate livestock uh, farming because of livestock farming indiscriminate livestock farming random livestock farming the pasture lands are depleted that is the effect and what can how can we minimize that proper management of pasture land controlling indiscriminate grazing uh, 
we can manage the pasture land and we can uh, control the uh, indiscriminate grazing random grazing similarly another problem is increasing land pollution because of mountaineers land pollution is very important here mountain in mountain region because of mountaineers especially okay that is the problem so how can we manage that proper management of waste in those mountaineering areas similarly gloef this is very important sometimes you are asked the full form of gloef that is glacial lake outburst plot you can say glacial glacial or glacier glacier no problem glacial lake outburst plot means global warming causing glacial lake outburst plot so because of global warming the uh, glacial lakes himtal in nepal we say himtal these glacial lakes can be outburst so because of that uh, the whole uh, area around uh, below the glacial lakes can be flooded so that is the pro problem so how can we control that controlling in emission of greenhouse gases and proper management of glacier lakes we can do this so these are the main effects due to human activities and we can mitigate them in our uh, in these ways so you can while giving these mitigating measures controlling measures you can also give your own idea okay no need to give same same from here you can give in your own way so these things are um, explained here so they are the same things i will only focus on the main points now let's go to the another uh, effects of uh, human activities on hilly region let's see now first there is introduction uh, more favorable environment for settlement and development activities in comparison to mountain region so hilly region has got the more favorable environment for settlement and similarly, gradual development of infrastructure is going on in hilly region. In urban areas are densely populated. Similarly, uh, this uh, ex in, uh, including agriculture, business, animal husbandry, people are uh, concerned, uh, people are involved in civil service, trade, production, and industrial entrepreneurship means they are also involved in industries. And what are the effects of human activities in this hilly region? Similarly, uh, look, uh, same same as uh, mountain region, it also has deforestation problem. Look, why is deforestation done in hilly region? Due to uh, for uh, for the extension of agriculture land. So um, and uh, fuel resource for fuel resource and for extension of agriculture land, deforestation is done. And for that, what is the mitigating measure? So uh, source for alternative source. Uh, for fuel and awareness towards utilization of forest resources without deteriorating so without uh, destroy destroying the forest resource utilizing them uh, correct utilization of the forest resource without depleting them without destroying them for the future generation uh, an alternative source of fuel can be found out and awareness can be done similarly uh, next very uh, important effect is <clears throat> use of chemical fertilizers insecticides and pesticides so this is very uh, much important uh, effect and for that what can we do awareness on less use of chemical fertilizers and biological control measures of insects and pests so we can use uh, the uh, compost manner instead of chemical fertilizers okay next is indiscriminate grazing same like uh, mountain region it also has same problem and for that we have to control the uh, random grazing similarly next important effect is um, uh, landslide soil erosion and flood um, due to misuse of land look here what can we do for that controlling cultivation on marginal fragile and sloped land so we can control the cultivation cultivation of crops uh, sorry we can control the cultivation of crops on marginal very fragile fragile means very weak and sloped land and we can do terrace cultivation system means step culti cultivation can be done so that it can control the um, uh, landslide and flood and similarly the grasslands are being converted into desert due to overgrazing this is one problem overgrazing so for that what is the mitigating measure overgrazing should be controlled similarly the 
Water resources like rivulets, ponds of surroundings are getting polluted. Pollution is another problem, water pollution. So for that, what can be done? Awareness programs on water pollution and sanitation should be conducted. That is the main solution of this. Now, these all things are again here explained. So I will not read out all the things. Now we can go to the effects of um human activities on um thorai region okay Th uh, ecosystem of thorai region look here the introduction uh, so in thorai region there is more population pressure you have to know that and in migration is increasing in thorai means from himalayan and hilly region people are coming to thorai region and uh, similarly um, development is sufficient uh, infrastructural development is sufficient means sufficient development infrastructures like transportation communication so the most developed uh, uh, ecological region and unsustainable development works and undue population pressure these are the main problems unsustainable development works so not scientific developmental works developmental works are sufficient they are done but they are unsustainable so what are the main main problems similar to mountain and hilly region it also has deforestation problem and the mitigation measures are same proper management of forest resource and next is excessive use of marginal lands the marginal lands are used excessively more so for that what is the controlling measure proper utilization and management of land resource overgrazing is also one problem controlling that overgrazing and depletion of ecosystem by random construction work look we said developmental works are carried out but they are done randomly the construction works are done randomly that is one effect so what can be done environment impact assessment before the construction work so this is called eia sometimes you may be asked the full form what uh, eia environmental impact assessment so before carrying out any construction work uh, the environmental impact assessment should be done means uh, how much the developmental work will hamper the nearest um, nearest land or nearest environment that should be accessed that should be evaluated that should be uh, guessed uh, similarly industrial pollution is another unique problem of this uh, uh, region. Uh, for that proper management of industrial wells, uh, sorry, industrial waste and chemicals should be done. And flood is another uh, uh, human uh, impact, human activity impact. Uh, for that tree plantation at the bank of rivers and afforestation. Similarly, uh, fertile and plain land is being submerged by the flood with stone soil, sand and silt resulting into infertility. Look at this one problem. And landslide in hilly region and Surya region should be stopped by planting trees. So this is the solution. So when you are asked the problems and mitigating measures, it is better if you make the table and present it like this. Uh, if not, you can also present in points in another ways, no problem. Uh, but uh, you have read many points among them, uh, you can remember some points five six or uh, how many you can at least four uh, more uh, more than that also you can remember okay now after this we have uh, achieved another um, learning objective it means we have uh, achieved the objective of um, telling about uh, the effects uh, of the effects and mitigating measures uh, of the Himalayan, Hindi and Thorai region. Okay, we have finished this. Now, I think all of you can uh, do this. Uh, now, let's go to next uh, last uh, learning achievement. So, management and conservation of environment. So, here I have uh, highlighted here, uh, I have written here environmental management is equal to consumption plus conservation okay so how can we manage the environment these are the problems we have discussed about different problems so how can we manage the environment so we can consume consumption plus conservation means we use the natural resources environmental resources consumption plus 
not only using we should conserve them as well so after that only we can manage the environment so c plus c means consumption plus conservation after we use the uh, natural resources or environmental resources we have to conserve them as well okay proper management and conservation of the environment should be felt necessary for balancing the consumption and preservation of the resources of environment uh, environment management should regulate and control should regulate and uh, control the human activities over the environmental components okay next here the ultimate goal of environment management what is the main ultimate goal of environment management that is rational utilization of the environmental components rational utilization means wise utilization of environmental resources and next aim is to mitigate the undue pressure of human activities. So we learned about the pressure of human activities on different ecological reasons. So to mitigate that, to control that is the main aim of environment, uh, environmental management. Okay, environment management. Let's say the human activities le only pressure like garsa, mitigate garsa means control garsa. Similarly, to preserve the depleting resources is another objective to preserve the depleting resources. The resources are depleting day by day. So to preserve them is another objective and utilizing the other resources to address the needs of uh, the human for their survival and productive life, okay? So next one is to address the needs of human for their survival, okay? Now, what are the major activities on environmental conservation and management? So major activities to conserve the environment and to manage the environment, what can be the activities we can do or what have been done till now? These both questions answer will come here. So what can we do and what have been done? Who is doing what? So especially we will focus on what can we do? Look here, first thing for the... In the environmental conservation and management, we can conserve the forest. We already saw that there, there are the problems of uh, uh, deforestation in Himalayan, Hilly and Tora in all the regions. So conservation of forest can be done. So for that, forest conservation programs are carried out in different local community and national level. Similarly, community forest management programs are conducted. The Ministry of Forest and Soil Conservation has conducted many forest conservation programs. These have been done. So except that, we can also do many other things for forest conservation. Tree plantation can be done. Barren lands can be planted. Awareness pro programs can be launched. Okay, These many uh, points you can give it. I will show you the slides here. Uh, okay, so look here. Okay, for conservation of forest, what can you do? Formation of community forest. Community forest formation can be done. Afforestation programs can be launched. Control of forest fire can be done. Awareness programs, formulation of different laws, inclusion of the subject in education at school. So these are your ideas you can also do this similarly conservation for the conservation of soil look here the ministry of forest and soil conservation and the ministry of agriculture are working for the conservation and management of soil of the country they are working so what can we do by our effort we can see in this slide what can we do for the conservation of land look here Conservation of pasture land, we can conserve the pasture land, Soran Chetra like conservation, tree plantation is there, control of flood and landslide can be done, terrace farming, or I already said step farming can be done, control of soil erosion, we can control soil erosion, reduction in the use of chemical fertilizers, so using the chemical fertilizer less, use of organic compost manure more, this can be the ideas. And now let's see management of waste materials. Waste materials can be managed. Okay. So how can we manage the waste materials? 
look here solid waste management how can we do management of biodegradable waste and management of non biodegradable waste we can do in two ways solid solid wastes can be managed in two ways biodegradable waste should be managed and non biodegradable waste should be managed so biodegradable means queenie which can be degraded which can be decayed non biodegradable which cannot be decayed so for biodegradable waste how can we man manage we can do burial system landfill system incineration system and composting system by these methods we can um, manage them and for non biodegradable waste we can use three r principles reduce reuse and recycle i will not tell in detail about this you may, you might have read yourself similarly pollution can be controlled by different ways uh, similarly public awareness can be raised and in the same way uh, watershed should be managed so these are all the ways to manage or conserve the environment i may have another slide look here how can we control the pollution of forestation on barren land proper disposal of solid waste proper urban planning controlling emission of harmful gases reduction in use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides so we can do that so in summary look here this uh, is uh, this last one 4.4.1 major activities on environmental conservation and management is very easy you can also write the points explain the points in your own ways so i did a bit faster so uh, what can we do to conserve the environment we can conserve the forest so how can you conserve the forest you give the ideas yourself okay similarly how you you have to conserve the soil how to conserve the soil you give the idea yourself similarly we can manage the solid waste how can we manage solid waste uh, i told you similarly we can control pollution and we can generate awareness program we can manage the watershed so if you do this it will be easy so now we have already got all the learning objectives once it, it would be better if we uh, revise it whether we have got the points or not let's see so according to learning objectives can we do or not so here first learning objective we got uh, now we can easily explain the trend of population distribution in himalayan hilly and Taraisan. now we can easily tell the meaning of ecosystem now we can easily elaborate the ecosystem of mountain hill and thorai region so in mountain hill and thorai region what type of um, physical aspect biological aspect and social aspect inside that which things are there we can do it easily and uh, we can also identify the impact of human uh, activities on the ecosystem of all the geographical regions what are the impacts negative impacts in mountain region, hilly region, Torai region. So we read in detail. Similarly, how can we mitigate those effects? Those uh, mitigating measures also we did. And similarly, how can we participate uh, ourselves in environment management and conservation? Just now we did. So I think all of you are clear about uh, this topic, this chapter, this unit population and environmental status of Nepal. I think you don't have any confusion now. So with this, I would like to end today's class. Thank you for listening.